Exploration Films. Check us out on the web at explorationfilms.com. In the West, most of us have been through the school system and been taught evolutionary theory, or the theory tale of evolution as I call it. And, it, and, it's, and it's nonsense. It's a house of cards and it doesn't take very much for you to start pulling it apart and the whole thing just collapses. So that's how we began the project. So when we came to it then on a practical level, the first thing we needed to do was the visuals had to be stunning. We've had decades of absolutely top quality wildlife programming with BBC Wildlife documentaries, David Attenborough and all of that stuff. So that was the first thing. The visuals had to be so good that they could stand toe to toe with any wildlife documentary that was secondly produced. Then of course the information needed to be good. One of the main reasons why macroevolution is so weak is when Darwin wrote Origin of the Species, which was I think 1859, he knew nothing about DNA. There was, there was no DNA research. Re DNA wasn't discovered in, you know, for, until decades later. So if he hadn't known about DNA, his book probably never would have been published. So the, the, weakest, the, whole, you know, the weakest foundation of evolution today, of evolutionary theory, is the fact that new information cannot be added to DNA, which is what would be required for macroevolution to take place. Macroevolution is when you form new kinds of animals, or new kinds of animals in their thinking would, be, would evolve, as opposed to microevolution, which is what we would call adaptation where you take two kinds of horses, you breed them together, you interbreed them, and you get a new kind of horse. So you get a new species, but it's still a horse. It's not a, you know, a cat, a fish, or a, or a monkey. Uh, that's microevolution, and we do occasionally see that happen in nature. So in the biological world, there is no mechanism that can add additional information to DNA. You can only lose it, or you can reshuffle it, but you cannot add information. Now, that argument alone is the death knell to evolutionary theory. It, it's, it's finished right there. And they cannot get beyond that. And so when you read all their material, they're continually playing this sort of uh, shell game with words and meanings uh, to make you think that, well, things you know, do develop new abilities and new traits or new colors, which is fine. That's adaptation. But it's still not macroevolution. And that requires new information. and that has never happened and it cannot happen. In school textbooks around the world, pictures representing the evolutionary tree of life depict what evolutionists believe was the gradual process of change that eventually produced all life on Earth. This began with so-called less complex life forms, which we are told evolved into fish, then amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals and eventually man. By drawing attention to the many comparable features that animals share in common, evolutionists claim these similarities are evidence of a gradual pattern of change. So by using the same argument, would biological differences suggest we didn't evolve? Ultimately, a link between monkeys, apes and men is needed to support this hypothesis. Like humans, these baboons have five digits on their hands and feet, two arms and legs, similar facial features, and similar internal organs. However, they also have many differences. For example, they walk on all fours, with hips and knee joints designed for tree-dwelling and climbing. Unlike humans, they're covered in fur, which means they must employ a radically different cooling system to us. Humans secrete water through sweat glands to cool the surface of their skin. This would not work in fur-covered animals like the baboon. So animals have a variety of different ways to lose excess body heat. This is not a minor biological variation, as sweat glands are very complex, and given that their use in this way is unique to humans, suggests that our designer had foreknowledge about our ability to clothe ourselves, and produce man-made homes where we would control our climate. Because of the obvious biological differences, Darwinists have tried desperately for many years to produce a missing link, an intermediary between apes and humans. A creature that appears to be part ape and part human. 
Museums of natural science around the world show models and reconstructions of ape men. School textbooks show artists' impressions of them. TV documentaries have even been walking with them. But the biggest trade secret in paleontology is that the missing link is actually, well, still missing. In 1908 through 1912, in Sussex, England, Piltdown Man was discovered. Not until over 50 years later was this find later exposed as a deliberate hoax. Tests revealed that the teeth had been filed down and skull fragments had been stained with chemicals to change their appearance. In China, Peking Man was found, or rather, several ape skulls were found one of which was put together with another ape jawbone containing a single tooth from over 80 feet away in a different rock strata. Java Man was another contender for the missing link, except he was only the remains of one human leg bone, married together with the skull of a large ape found 45 feet away. Additionally, the fact that modern human skulls were also discovered in the same dated rock strata was conveniently kept quiet from all the reports. Lucy is another famous example. She even has her own model in the British Museum of Natural History. What the public failed to recognize is that Lucy is only an artist's impression. This is because the bones that were discovered did not form a complete skeleton. Almost no bones were discovered for the hands and feet, yet the reconstruction shows almost human-like feet on an ape-like creature. Artists' impressions are guesses not science. It is forensically impossible to produce an accurate model of a skull from just a few bone fragments, especially when it's a unique specimen. Even with a complete skull, scientists can only guess the shape of the nose, for example, because it contains no bones. Neither does a tooth allow someone to accurately determine the cranial capacity or brain size of a creature, only to speculate. Moreover, was the claim, that her pelvic bone was distorted. This was a blatant attempt to suggest she walked habitually upright, which was never proven. Producing models and illustrations from a variety of artists' impressions has been going on for decades. Nowadays, computer-generated images adorn our TV screens, depicting everything from T-Rex to Mrs. Neanderthal. Some fossils showing the imprints of skin or fur have been discovered, on rare occasions even with the skeleton of a specific dinosaur. But fossilized skeletons alone do not reveal an animal's color, patterning, body mass or breeding habits as conjectured by BBC documentaries. This is science fiction, not science fact. It's obvious that behavior does not fossilize. Science is advanced by observation, not speculation. These baboons, like all apes and monkeys, have only two joints in the thumb, not three like humans, and a significantly lower level of intelligence. As a result, humans can make documentaries about them rather than the other way around. Exploration Films, where curious truths and uncommon minds meet.